Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Taji and this is Melanated Maker DIY. And for today's video, I'm going to be taking you guys on the adventure that is my guest bathroom. If you don't know, I've been living in this house with my husband for about two and a half years now. Our house was a new build so there was no need to like demo anything or completely tear stuff out. It was just so boring. She just really needed a pick-me-up, a makeover, a revitalization, okay? We are replacing those basic features, adding new shelving, doing an accent wall, and we're doing all of it for less than $400 because we love a budget makeover. <laughs> there is so much happening in this bathroom that I needed to break this down into two parts. So this is part one, so make sure you come back for part two. You are not gonna wanna miss this gorgeous reveal that is coming your way, okay? So before we get into this budget makeover, make sure you hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. And if you really love what you see, you're gonna wanna make sure to hit that notification bell so you know when I drop my next video. All right, now let's get into this makeover. So like I said, this bathroom was boring. It was full of nothing but just the default generic fixtures that you get when you get a new build home. Plus, have you ever just gone to the store with something in mind and then bought it and then got home and was just like, meh? Like, that's how I feel about this bathroom. Like, I went to the store, I bought the rug, I bought the shower curtain, I bought all this stuff. I get home and I was just like, no, no thank you. <laughs> the first replacement that is going on in this bathroom is I am going to be changing the light fixtures. So, this is a small bathroom, there are no windows in it. And so I knew replacing the light fixture and getting new bulbs was going to be so necessary. And so it felt like, even though there wasn't, there was a window. So I shut off the electricity in that house, ran an extension cord from the other side of the house with a lamp, and set it up on my counter so that I had some light in the bathroom. I started removing the original fixture, and here's a tip. Whenever you're making any replacements, always take a picture of the current setup. That way, if you end up making a huge mistake, at least you have evidence and can backtrack to where you started. And that way you can call a professional if you need to. Also, in some cases, like this one, thankfully, I was able to use that picture as reference when I attached the new light fixture since the wires were the same color. So because of that, it made it really, really easy to get in this new light fixture, but the only trouble that I had was that bracket. It was very stubborn and it was not wanting to line up straight, but after a little while of fighting with it, I got it. But then in true Taji fashion, I broke a light bulb. <laughs> it was one of the bulbs in the color that I didn't like so the show must go on next I tackled the sink faucet and y'all if you know a plumber think a plumber okay send them a gift basket an edible arrangement a gift card a thank you note a car a cruise don't don't actually send them a cruise that's a bad idea think a plumber in your life because they deserve it so nevertheless I laid down some towels, turned the water off, and got to work. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is make sure you turn off the water because the last thing you need is water spraying you in the face while you're trapped underneath the sink, unable to defend yourself. Hey y'all, okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is turn off the water. And then we're going to undo these doohickeys up here that mount the faucet to the sink. We're also going to need to undo the sink stopper as well. Since we're going to replace the sink stopper, this piece here and everything attached to it is going to have to be undone. I am not a fan of this task, y'all. <laughs> Plus, there's a spider just chilling in its web under here. Gosh, pray for me, y'all. Once I got the faucet removed, I completely cleaned down the sink, scrubbed all the old gunk and hard water off of it so that I could put the new faucet on a nice, clean sink. All in all, doing the sink faucet wasn't the worst thing to do, but would I do it again? I mean, yes, I guess I would do it again. Would I like it? No. So, I don't know. There you go. That's, that's my take. <laughs> So things were coming along, things were getting done, and then it was time for the shelves. I had originally hoped for some low profile floating shelves and found some plans that seemed easy enough and, and I thought, I can take some liberties here, I can switch it up a little bit, do a couple things a little bit differently, I've got the concept. 
I was wrong. I could literally feel the doubt in every choice that I was making. Even watching the film back, I can see the doubt and the hesitation in everything that I'm doing. And I eventually just got to the point that I was like, no, this is awful. When I'm doing this, it's bad. <laughs> and I abandoned it. And sometimes that's what DIY is. You try something, you mess up, you pivot. And this was one of those things where I tried it, I messed up, and so I pivoted. So I decided to pivot online by myself some nice, simple hardware that was going to be easy to install so I could get past the trauma of trying to do the floating shelves. I had an extra board in the garage that was left over from a different project and two cuts later I had myself some new shelves. So lastly, the accent wall. I have been seeing this accent wall all over the internet lately. Everybody and their mom is out there doing a wood slat accent wall. And as soon as I saw this picture of this accent wall with the dark gray, black, slate, charcoal color behind it, I knew I need this in my life. So I measured my wall, did some math, and found out how many boards I would need to cut down to make enough wood slats. I used my table saw to rip down boards into slats, but you could also just buy like one by twos or some smaller board to just have as wood slats if you don't have a table saw to rip them down. It's probably going to cost you a little bit more, but it's definitely cheaper than buying a table saw if you don't already have one. So because of the length of the boards, I needed my husband's help to manage all the wood. To manage all the wood? This is what you're putting on the internet. Okay, that's fine. All in all, with his help, it took about an hour to rip down all the boards into slats that we needed. I sanded each of the wood slats on three sides, then I stained and sealed them. Now I say this all casually like, no big deal, but it was a big deal. It was a lot. <laughs> In reality, prepping all these wood slats probably took about six hours spread out over a couple of days. I'm not gonna lie, it was very exhausting and tedious work, but I just turned up some music, put on my headphones, jammed out, and got it done. So while the seal dried, I painted the accent wall with some YouTube magic. Once everything was dry, it was time to install. I'd measure my wall, cut down the boards, and use a wooden spacer to install. I'd measure, cut a handful of boards, and install. It was definitely leg day going up and down that ladder all night, and it was definitely a turn on my music and jam out kind of task, because it took me about three or four hours to do. such humble beginnings. To now. So let me know what you think of this bathroom. I'll leave the link to all the hardware that I use, plus the blog post on how you can DIY this wood slat wall in the description below. So if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you love this video, go ahead and hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when I post part two of this of the full bathroom reveal. I cannot wait for you to see the final product. All right, thanks guys. <laughs>